For thousands of years, clothing and textiles were dyed using colors from natural sources. Today, plant-based natural dyes are still vibrant, beautiful sources of color. The growing organic textile movement has created a market for eco-friendly dyes. Dye plants are potential crops for farmers to consider as they look to diversify their operations. They can be grown and processed to create a value-added dye product that can be sold throughout the year. Once made into dye, it can be used to color a wide range of textiles and fibers. Natural dye growing projects around the world have created and successfully marketed a wide range of additional products, including cosmetics and artist materials. In this short film, we will focus on the cultivation and processing of indigo yielding dye plants to produce blue pigment. Indigo, familiar as the denim blue of blue jeans, is actually found in a variety of different plant species across the globe. Here, we've focused on several of the varieties currently cultivated in the southeastern United States. We'll provide an overview of cultivation practices and show the process of extracting indigo pigment from the fresh leaves of the Japanese indigo plant. Natural dye crops have the potential to increase sustainability in a diversified cropping system. The indigo-containing plants have few pest pressures, and several species of them are leguminous plants that frequently serve as a green manure and a summer cover crop in other parts of the world. On our plot in Middle Tennessee, we've cultivated several different indigo-yielding dye plants, tropical indigo, Japanese indigo, and woad. Each has slightly different growing needs. Plants in the indigofera family are known as tropical indigo. They're grown around the world for their quality blue pigment. These plants are all legumes, meaning when properly inoculated, they can fix nitrogen from the atmosphere and convert it into usable plant nutrient. If tilled back into the soil at the end of the season, they can help replenish nitrogen for the following year's crop. These plants thrive in hot, humid climates, growing best in fertile soil and full sun. They require a long, hot growing season. Indigoferas have a hard seed coat, so soaking overnight in hot water or seed scarification before planting is necessary. Japanese indigo, also known as dyer's knotweed, is a traditional dye from Japan. Known by the scientific name Persicaria tinctorum, it is in the buckwheat family and can withstand hot and moderate climates. It needs regular water during the season and develops the most blue pigment when nitrogen is added during the growing season. Fresh seed is needed to grow Japanese indigo, and seed over two years old is unlikely to germinate. Sow your seeds in a greenhouse in spring and set out seedlings after danger of frost is passed. Woad, Isatis tinctoria, is a biennial plant that is fully winter hardy. It can withstand cooler temperatures, so it is best suited for northern climates. However, it contains only about one quarter of the dye pigment, as do other indigo varieties. So if you are in a region with a longer growing season, we recommend cultivating indigo fera or Japanese indigo. Allow your plants to grow until spring of the second season if you want to collect seed. For processing fresh indigo plants into pigment, you will first need something to harvest plants with, whether it be a tractor pulled crop harvester or a small sickle. During harvest day, you will also need twine, a large soaking tub, weights, and water. Two days after harvest, on processing day, you will need industrial lime, also known as calcium hydroxide or pickling lime, and garden hose or sticks. A scale, tarp, and measuring cups are additional supplies you may need. Japanese indigo plants can normally be harvested twice a year. The first harvesting typically takes place in July or August while the second should occur before frost, and ideally, during a dry spell before the plant sets seed. This is when pigment level is best quality. Several of the best plants can be left unharvested and allowed to go to seed for next year's crop. After harvest, indigo plants are bundled about one plant per bundle, with the leaves still attached to the stems. The harvest can then be weighed so that leaf and pigment yield can be calculated. The next step is soaking the indigo plants in warm water for a few days. This process will work better with larger volumes of plant material in water, since the material will begin to ferment faster under these conditions. Here, we've gathered approximately 100 pounds of plant material from a 100-foot row of Japanese indigo. 
We've filled a 300-gallon livestock tank half full of water, covered it with a tarp, and allowed it to heat in the sun. The water should be at least 80 degrees Fahrenheit before adding your dye plants, so if you're harvesting later in the season when the weather has already cooled, consider utilizing space in a greenhouse or finding alternate methods of heating the water. Once your plants have been harvested, bundled, and weighed, move quickly to submerge them in the water. Weigh the plants down with plywood, stones, or anything that will help hold the plants under the surface of the water for the entire soaking period. In this demonstration, we've used plastic grates weighted down with rocks. As they ferment, the plants produce oxygen that will cause them to rise, so check periodically to make sure all the plants are submerged and add additional weights if necessary. The plants should remain covered with water the entire soaking period. Once the plants have been added, covering the tanks with the tarp helps retain heat and speed up the fermentation process. Within a day or two, the plants will begin fermenting. The soaking liquid will change first from clear to a yellow color after the first day of soaking. By about two days after harvest, the soaking liquid will be antifreeze color, a bright neon blue-green. This is indigo pigment's precursor. Now take out the soaked plants. You can strain the soaking water by passing a colander or sieve through it. The soaked plants can be discarded on the compost pile. Take out a bucket of the soaking liquid. Pour several cups of industrial lime into the container while stirring well. The liquid will change to a brownish color. Once the lime is completely dissolved, slowly pour the small bucket of liquid into the larger tub, stirring constantly. You will see the color in the larger tub turn brown. Continue stirring, watching the color carefully, and stop once the liquid in the larger tub turns brownish red. Allow the liquid to sit overnight, covered with a tarp. After one or two days, indigo pigment will have fully settled to the bottom. Carefully decant the watery liquid from the top and discard appropriately. The top liquid will still be quite alkaline because of the lime, so if you are on a septic system, you will need to neutralize the alkalinity before pouring the liquid down the drain. Be careful not to disturb the sediment as you take off the top liquid. If you notice the sediment is becoming disturbed, allow it to settle before continuing to decant. Once the liquid has been cleared from the top, the settled sediment can be scooped up and transferred to a large bucket. Allow the sediment to continue settling for an additional one or two days, then strain off any clear liquid that rises to the top. The settled pigment can then be stored in glass jars. We hope this video encourages you to grow and process indigo dye plants. In addition to blue, a wide variety of dye pigment can be found in cultivated and wild plants. Enjoy exploring the world of natural color.